Hello, my name is Mark Haber and I'm a clinical associate professor and a shoulder surgeon. My website is www.so.com.au. I'm based both in Sydney and in Wollongong. In this video, we'll go through the steps involved in performing an anatomic and reverse shoulder replacement. Um, why we do an anatomic versus a reverse replacement will also be discussed in another video, as well as the principles behind computer navigation. To get into the shoulder joint, we make an incision over the front of the shoulder, from the collarbone to just to the armpit, to expose the shoulder joint. Incision is made. We then separate the two muscles over the front of the shoulder joint, the pectoralis and the deltoid, to expose the underlying rotator cuff subscapularis tendon. So we have to release one tendon of the rotator cuff to expose the shoulder joint, that being the subscapularis. Once the subscapularis tendon is released, we then expose the ball part of the shoulder joint and we can clean up all the spurs in preparation for preparing the humeral head. The ball is exposed. We then use an oscillating saw to take the top of the ball off. Once we've completed that part, we then prepare the humerus. So once the ball's been removed, we then find the shaft of the humerus. Now the humerus, like most long bones, is naturally hollow and all we have to do is find the hollow pathway. We then prepare the shaft of the humerus using reamers of incremental sizes of one millimeter to find out which what size component will fit down the shaft. Determined the size of the implant, we put a trial implant down into the humerus. Steps to expose the shoulder joint and pre prepare the humerus. Once we've prepared the humerus, and that is the ball side of the shoulder joint, we then have to turn our, turn our attention to the socket side. Now, how we prepare the socket side depends on whether we're doing an anatomic or reverse, and the difference is explained on another video. The step in preparing the glenoid is putting in the pilot hole. In the vast majority of cases, we do use navigation to get the right spot. And we'll, uh, there's another video explaining all about navigation. But in brief, what we planned on the computer was where the blue dot on the right sits and the yellow dot is where our, where our, our drill is. So we have to just get the yellow dot on the blue dot to make sure we're exactly where we want to be. We put our pilot hole in the right position. We then put a reamer in to smoothen off the glenoid or the socket to accommodate the implant. And yes, this is also done under computer navigation to make sure it's done at the right angle and the right depth. Smoothened off the glenoid or the socket. In the anatomic replacement, we then have to create the posts to accommodate the glenoid component. Once the glenoid is prepared, we can then insert the definitive component. And in this system, this is cemented in using what we call bone cement. So this is an animation showing us how we prepare the glenoid. First of all, for the anatomic replacements where we create holes to accommodate the post of the implant. This is done under navigation and then we swap the tracker onto the instrument which 
inserts the anatomic definitive component. And again, this is done, as you can see on the left, un under navigation. Now, this component is cemented into position, and that's the glenoid com completed for an anatomic. Now, this is how we prepare the glenoid for a reverse replacement. Again, using navigation, we create a pilot hole, and then we ream or smoothen off the glenoid. Again, removing only a millimeter or two of bone usually, taking all the spurs off. We then, again, under navigation, prepare the central post. And once that's done, we can insert the component. So we swap the tracker off onto the instrument to insert the definitive component. And this is the definitive reverse component. It's uncemented. It's placed in position using navigation. But to fix this one, instead of using cement, we use screws. So the screw holes are created using navigation to make sure we've got optimum positioning the screws into good solid bone. So once the screw holes are prepared, we can then insert the screws. This is just the animation in summary showing how we do the complete operation. Again, for an anatomic, we prepare the glenoid, create the posts, insert the glenoid component, which is cemented in place. We then insert the humeral component, put the ball where the old ball used to be. And this is the completion of an anatomic shoulder replacement. This is the reverse component. Remember, we remove the humeral head. We prepare the glenoid. We insert the glenoid component, and this is screwed into position. We place a glenosphere over the top of it. Place the humeral components. So we put a ball where the socket was. So therefore, we now put a socket where the ball is. Assemble the components. And that's the completion of how we do a reverse replacement. So I hope you found this useful in explaining how we insert anatomic and reverse shoulder replacements. We will have other videos explaining why we do an anatomic versus why and when we do reverse, and also the role of navigation inserting the shoulder replacements. I'd like to thank you for listening to this video. I'd like to thank you again for listening to this presentation. I click on the thumbs up if you did find it useful and click on subscribe if you want to get updates on shoulder matters. If you do have any questions, you can leave a comment below or you can access our website on www.so.com.au.